Hey guys, I pray you're blessed today. So there is a lot going on and we need to be in prayer right now for, 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 for course Israel. They are definitely getting ready to strike Iran and, um, the United States is about to go crazy not knowing what they're doing and how they're going to do it. And so we need to pray for Israel for, for strength, for wisdom, and that God, um, we know God is not going to desert Israel. That is his nation. That is his land. And he will not forsake his people. So um, we definitely be praying for them. We, my brothers and sisters, are on our way out of here. Please be praying for everyone that's being affected by the hurricane. Milton in uh, Florida, you know, it's hard to know what to believe. There are so many voices that are saying so many different things about this thing. You know, some are saying that it's been degraded to a, a category three. Others are saying that it's a five or a six. It's just, it's hard to, hard to know, you know, there's been tornadoes that have been spawning out from this thing and there's already been a lot of devastation because of the tornadoes and it's, it's heartbreaking. You know, it's, it's completely heartbreaking to see what is happening. We need to be praying for Florida. So please know that if you have family in Florida, if you and your family are in Florida, you have friends, whatever in Florida, please know that we are praying for you. We are praying that God would um, wrap you in his arms and that he would put a hedge of protection around you and your family. There's a lot going on. A lot of people have been trying to evacuate Florida. And sadly, a lot of them are, are running out of gas on the interstate. The, the gas stations are all out of gas. Grocery stores are all out of food. People have been preparing for this storm. And they're saying that it could be a, a monster. So we keep our eyes on Jesus and we stay focused on him and we continue to pray while we're here. You know, my heart is breaking right now just for all of the mass destruction. You know, we have Florida and then we have the hurricane that happened last year week with um, Hurricane Helene with Florida and Georgia and East Tennessee and North Carolina. All the devastation, all the death, all the destruction we've seen. They're still picking up the pieces of their life and they're going to be picking, they're going to be picking up and cleaning this up for, for a long time. And um, of course, you know, we have, we have Israel, like I said, and they are on the cusp of a major, major attack on Iran. Wyoming has a massive fire. I think it's 80, 83,000 miles of acreage that has been burnt. And Sister Larissa and I were talking about that. And I, I don't feel led to share that right now. She might share it on her channel tomorrow morning. So if you have not subscribed to her, please do. Love the Hot Mess is her channel. And she's a a fantastic sister in Christ. Um, but yeah, there's a lot happening, guys. And that's not even like all that is happening. The earth is literally shaking with, with earthquakes. Volcanoes are awakening up on the ring of fire. So much is happening. And we have got to keep our eyes focused on Jesus and Jesus alone. If you do not know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, you are in for a, a lot of horror and pain and suffering. And it's going to be on a massive scale. But you don't have to be here for that time. Jesus died on the cross so all of your sins could be forgiven you know, you might be sitting here saying, but I'm not a sinner. I'm a good person. I don't do this and I don't do that. But you know what the Bible says? We've all fallen short of the glory of God. We're all sinners. And, you know, God, he is perfect. And his law is perfect. And so if you don't abide by his law perfectly, 
you are a sinner. The only one who was able to keep all of the laws, all of the commandments was Jesus. He came to earth, God in flesh, born of a virgin. He came with the sole purpose of dying on the cross for our sins by the shedding of his innocent blood. He became the blood atonement for the, our sins and his blood covers us. And when we come to him acknowledging the fact that we are a sinner and we are in need of a savior, and when we come to him in belief and faith and trust in him, that he paid it all on the cross with his blood, by the shedding of his blood, that he died on the cross for our sins. He was buried and on the third day he rose again. That is how you receive salvation, believing in Jesus and Jesus alone. None of your works will save you. There is nothing that you can do to earn or work your way into heaven. Only by believing and trusting in Jesus will you be saved and will you be allowed to go to heaven. Quit leaning on yourself and your righteous works. The Bible tells us that none are good. No, not one. Jesus was the only perfect one that ever walked this earth. He's the only righteous one. So place your faith and trust in him today. If you, if you have eyes to see and ears to hear, you can see all the devastation that is going on and you can see that things are not normal and they haven't been for a very long time and things are just getting worse and they are going to continue to get worse. My brothers and sisters, we are on our way out. But while we're here, let's share the gospel. Let's share the good news of Jesus. You know, there's a lot going on in my family right now, and I am I am brokenhearted, but I'm still trusting God. And I'm trusting him whether my family is saved before the rapture or if they come to a saving grace through him during the seven-year tribulation, that they are going to be saved. You know, I can't sit around and worry about, about them. I pray for them, and I love them, but I leave them at the feet of Jesus. I can't save them. I couldn't even save myself. So what makes me think that I could save anybody else? You know, it, it's hard when it's our loved ones, when it's the people that we care about the most. When we when we see what's going on in this world and they're not saved, it makes us want to be worried for them because we love them and we want our family in heaven with us. And God wants them there with us too. And the hard thing is to realize that man has a free will and God won't trump that free will. But God has ways of dealing with people that we don't have ways of dealing with them. He knows how to get to each and every single person. But still yet, even when he reaches out to them, when he calls out to them, they have that right to make that choice. Whether they're going to accept the free gift of salvation through Jesus or they are going to reject it. And if you reject the free gift of salvation, you will go to hell because of your sins. You know, we in ourselves can never be perfect. This is why we need Jesus' righteousness imputed upon us because we can never get to heaven by our own merit. Never. It's only because of Jesus that we are permitted to go to heaven. We need his righteousness covering us. When we accept the free gift of salvation, God doesn't see our sins. He sees his son's righteousness covering us from head to toe. His precious blood covering us and we are justified in the eyes of God and God his wrath is no longer upon us and this is what's coming upon this world very very soon is God's wrath God's judgment on those who refuse to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior you see Israel 
has to go through the seven-year tribulation. This is why the seven-year tribulation has to happen is because of Israel. They do not believe that Jesus is their Messiah. They're still looking for their Savior. And they think they're going to get him. But it's going to be the Antichrist they're getting. And it's not going to have a happy ending. But God, he is the author and he is the finisher of our faith. And he is going to bring a remnant of Israel through the seven-year tribulation. I wish I could describe to you how horrific this time, this period of time is going to be. I don't have the words to say or describe it. And we know this time, the Bible tells us, it's going to be like no time that has ever existed. It's going to be worse, worse than World One, World One, sorry, I can't talk. World War One and World War Two. It's going to be worse than the Holocaust. It's going to be worse than anything that has ever happened on the face of this earth that it has been evil and, and corrupt and, and horrific. You... Your mind can't even fathom how bad it's going to be. You don't want to be here for this time. Come to Jesus now during the age of grace. Soon the door is going to close on this period. And you will have to die more than likely for Jesus. You know, a lot of people say, well, there's brothers and sisters all around the world and a lot of them are giving their lives for Jesus now. Yes, that's true. But see, this is man's wrath. This isn't God's wrath. God's wrath comes after the restrainer is removed. You know, there's so many brothers and sisters out there that say it so much better than I could ever they, they speak more eloquent. They, they talk more fluent than me. Um, I'm just a little country girl who, who stumbles over her words a lot and sometimes has a hard time of trying to formulate what I'm trying to get out of my, out of my brain and come out of my mouth because my brain's going faster than my mouth can go. But this one thing is true, and I pray that you sense it and you see it, is that I love the Lord. And that I love him with all of my heart. And he is my everything. If it was not for him, I would not be sitting here talking to you right now. I would probably be somewhere either in an insane asylum. asylum. Can't talk tonight, I'm sorry. I would either be um, in an institute or I would be out on the streets, strung out. I, I would be in a very bad place, dead. You know, the Lord has kept me. He's kept many of us. And it's because of him that we can call heaven our home. This world is not our home. Every day makes it more evident that this world is not our home. This world falls deeper and deeper into chaos every day. I am thankful that this world is not our home. We have something so much better to look forward to. We have a place that's waiting for us that there will be no more death, no more sickness, no more sorrow, no more having to say goodbye to the ones that we love. No more tears, no more fears, no more worry, anxiety, no more having to pay bills. That's a, that's a nice one right there. We will be with Jesus forever and we will be with the ones that we love. We will be with each other for all eternity. And it's going to be wonderful. You know, we won't have to deal with all these, you know, when somebody gets on our nerves, we... 
you know, we want to say something to, you know, bite off the, you know, like, leave me alone or shut up or, you know, sometimes some very horrible things. We won't have those feelings or just, you know, get, leave me alone. I need some alone time. We won't have any of those feelings. We won't feel that way. Sorry, I thought I heard um, an emergency alert, but it's not. <sighs> we have got to keep our eyes on Jesus. He is going to see us through this. We need him. We need him every day. And each day it becomes more evident that we need him. And we need to get closer to him. And how do you get closer to Jesus? It's just like any other relationship. You have to build on it. You have to work at it. Read your Bible. Pray. Talk to him. Fellowship with him. You know, just acknowledge him through your day. Hi, Lord. I just wanted to tell you I love you. Thank you for another day. Lord, I ask you to help me, guide me, direct me. Use me the way that you would see fit to use me today. Let me be a blessing to others. Let the words that come out of my mouth glorify you, Lord. Let my life glorify you. You know, so many people get caught up in their prayers because they think that they have to say these big, eloquent prayers. Just talk to them. Just talk to them. He's there for you and he wants to spend time with you. He desires to spend time with you. And just think, one day, very soon, we're going to get to spend time with him physically. We're going to see him face to face. I can't wait to peer upon him. I know he's beautiful and glorious and mighty and everything. So hold on, brothers and sisters. I know this is this has been a roller coaster. It's been crazy. But we're going to get through this together, okay? Please know that I am praying for you. Please know that I am here. I am just an email away. I'm just a comment away. You know, I'm sorry. I know I haven't really been replying to your to your um, comments here lately, but it's just been so crazy. But I at least been trying to heart them. And please know that I am reading them. And if I feel led to to comment, then I do. But please forgive me. I there's just been so much going on, and now that I've broke my finger. It's hard to type sometimes, but um, I, I'm definitely, definitely praying for you, and I'm definitely reading your comments. So please, if you have any prayer requests, please put them in the comment section. You can email me. My email is in the description box. Don't forget, Saturday, 1010 at 5 o'clock Central Standard Time. We are going to be doing a live and my dad may or may not do it with us. I am talking to him about it and he's going to see about his schedule. So hopefully he'll do it, but I, I can't promise you that he will. But I love you all. I am praying for you all. And I will see you all in the clouds very, very soon. We are on our way out. I believe very soon. But until then, we're going to keep sharing the gospel. We're going to keep encouraging each other, praying for each other, lifting each other up. And we're going to continue to allow the Lord to use us. All right. God bless you all. I love you all. And I will talk to you very soon.